Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 28-4 and we're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We pick a topic. And when we do this, <laughs> Rob apparently does hand motions equipped similar to those of a DJ to put himself in the zone. I to thought rock out with his A and B sharp chords out. <laughs> I thought I would mess mess with you, you know, while you were watching me on the camera. Mission accomplished. That's good. I was so confused. I was corn fuzzled. <laughs> um, well, I anyway, made that word up. This is a video game. And now it's cromulent. It's 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 cromulent. Crumb. Every week we listen to. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We pick a topic and we talk about it. We listen to some great tunes and we get into it. Um, today's a little different. Purnell is uh, not in the studio today. I had some errands to run. We had some things going on. And so I knew that it was going to be tough getting into the house at the same time. I don't think that's a big deal. Purnell thinks it's a terrible I'm idea. He's, he's lonely in his house. He's looking at me like, I wish I could be with him. <laughs> no, nah, I'm, just, I'm just sitting here being me. Like it's been, it's been a rough couple of every days. So honestly, I'm kind of in this, like this simple state of just pushing, just pushing. Just but pushing. there is, but there's just one, there is one funny thing worth talking about. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's multiple, there's always multiple things. Um, like I am, I tried to sell, I'm trying to sell a box of garbage pill kids now. Oh, you are trying to sell it. That's like, this is like the, uh, this is, this is the, the story arc of the show now. I'm now selling garbage pill kids cards. Pretty much. Like I bought an uh, <laughs> extra box of them back a couple years ago. And then I saw that it, one of them sold on the internet for like $800 or close to it. So mm-hmm. I was like, maybe I'll get lucky too. And of course with the way eBay works, um, you'll post it and then you'll get like one or two bids and that's all you'll get for like the like six of the seven days. And on that final seventh day, all of a sudden, anything you're going to get, that's when it all shows up. Yeah. Everyone just watches your auction and then jumps across each other's hands to get what you bought. That's what you do, so, right? That's what I do. Um, all right, sorry, you no, just, I, I rarely ever buy, so, sorry, I, so just, I don't know. Are you just holding out then? Are you just like, sorry? Are you know? Are, are you waiting right now for that time to happen? Yeah, I got six days before I know if I'm going to luck out and get the good stuff, or if I'm going to get like short change on it, like every other schlub. But uh, I want the money. I want the goods. Like, if I'm getting rid of that box, I want to get paid for it. Because if I get, like, MSRP, I'm like, well, what the heck was the point? I'd rather have kept it. I'm selling it because people were selling, paying crazy money for it. Can you, crazy money. money. Can you set, like, a threshold, though? Yes and no. Um, yes, you can set a buy it now. And yes, you can do a minimum bid. But I'm a weird guy who was, like, taking the advice of thing where... I was like, you should just set it at a reasonable start value and let everyone else bid up on it. And I'm like, okay. So I set it at a reasonable amount, but put the buy it now at a high amount. And was like, if someone jumps on it, they can buy it now. But otherwise, I'm, I'm at the, I'm at, I'm beholden to whatever the watchers Man, decide to dump onto it. I think that that is all strategy, which is real specific to what you're selling. You know, like selling, um, selling a treadmill from like a person's basement as opposed to selling like a rare box of garbage pail kids cards. It's even, even selling mm-hmm. baseball cards compared to garbage pail kids cards has to be like a really different strategy. I'm sure. Well, hopefully the fact that there's people doing the watcher thing means that there's going to be a competition yeah. when it all comes down to it. Wow. And if that's the case, then they'll be fighting in the last like 10 minutes to get a good price or, or the, or not a good price, but the pay and win on it. Mm. Well, I'm pulling for it. Like, I'm going to pay them. I'm pulling Fingers for it. If the, um, the, is it going to end before the next show? I would love to have like a, a conclusion to the story. It'll probably actually, yeah, because it ends in like six days. So awesome. it should technically end before the show. All right. Um, we gotta let the listeners know. That, and the I only other thing, <laughs> oh, and then the only other thing is that, um, you know, E three is well, it will be. That's I guess it will be next week too, because that's when it will be the public E three. But I applied for this year just to see if I could get in out of curiosity, and I got approved. So I'm on the E three roster, 
but it's funny because since I'm not actually in Los Angeles and they're doing this whole virtual thing and I'm doing my nine to five normal stuff, yeah, I just never have time to even log in. Like I logged into the E three album situation like twice to see what the app was like and to try to make some sense out of it. And I just I'm not feeling it. It's like I almost would rather wait for Kotaku or Hey Poor Player to know, hey, here's what came up in the E3. I'm like I'd rather read it from those than to read it from the E3, you know, yeah. show floor app. Ah. You 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 like to be there. You like you're like the Gonzo journalist of of video games. You want to be on the floor. You want to be seeing how people are feeling, what's going down. Otherwise, yeah, this man. whole online thing is boring. It's very much so. Like, it's funny. You log, you make your account and you log in and, and uh, they actually make you make an avatar, like an actual physical avatar oh, really? of yourself, like, like a me. And then after you've made the avatar, they ask you to choose your favorite. Like, what companies do you follow? And then it's like, what are your interests? Like, you're actually, you're actually creating a profile for yourself right, on the it. E3 site. That's for the commercials. And then, like, you yeah, go to, like, uh, the, all the vendors can, can pick then, you out. That's pretty much it because then after that, like there's like there's like a couple like supposed forums and I tried checking one of them out and it was just like a bunch of people saying, Hi, I am such and such podcaster or I write for this website hoping to meet some new people here. Like they're all networking in like the equivalent of like a, a classic Reddit forum. And I'm like, I can't I mean, well just be on Reddit. Like I just yeah. just do this on Reddit without E three. You know like I get that they need they want to try to do something to make keep E three moving. Because two years off would be bad, um, especially because E3 is kind of already phasing out. Like right. E3 is more for like the industry than for like the consumer. It just so happens that when the industry is talking, reporters are there to see it, and then they're the ones reporting such and such display this, which they're hoping to get some X much you know, X profits in the quarter, fourth quarter of this year or whatever. So they see it and they report on. It, and that's what we get cited for, but. E3 is, I feel like it's not even for us in that sense, but with that said, I still feel like it's kind of being phased out because all those meetings they have and all there could be done in a cheaper way without them having the giant vendor halls and all that. Just have one area where it's like, hey, we're going to spend a week out here. We'll have some very I small know. rooms where it's going to demo our stuff and then one room next to each of them where you can have interviews yeah. scheduled. Well, you can see how it turned into such room. a big thing because... It's not just the games industry that created such a huge convention or any of these conventions, any of these like IT vendor conventions that I have to go to. It's like, because those on those virtual ones are crap. I hate them. I hate them. I don't want to do that. They are not enjoyable at all. Like there's the industry that is built around conventions, like around the booths and around the physical space and around getting. Oh, there's money in that. Exactly. That's where all the money is. And so like like that's that's what you're experiencing and if you're not experiencing any of that like they, they can't support that anymore and so then now all, all of these the actual vendors themselves and these game companies they're like well what are we gonna do we still have to announce all of our stuff and make a spectacle out of it so anyway i'm hoping we get back to back not back to <laughs> it sounds so stupid i hope we get back to normal but i'm hoping we get back to like a time where we can all get together and play games with our friends that is true. Yeah. I feel like we're already on the way to that. We are just, on the way. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll have to. It's a play it by ear thing because yeah. Without going into specifics, there's a lot of balls in the air and a lot of mentalities that are all over the friggin' Get them place. Balls in and, the air. Um. Yeah. Like for me, like but, like yeah, I want to hang out. With, I can hang out with my friends and play games. You come over, we can play games. But, um, I'm I'm not ready to get on an airplane just yet. <laughs> Maybe that's I'm just my anxiety. Not, I'm almost not, but I mean, I'm technically doing it soon, so I'm mm-hmm. just going to have to deal with it for the yeah, sake right. of just doing a thing. But I'll admit, personally, I could prefer, I'd could prefer not to, but I'm just in that mindset now where it's like, if I came home and something and I was sick or something, it's just me in the house. It ain't hurting nobody. But if I had like family here or something, right. yeah, I could see it being a little different. Like, oh man, yeah. I got to be mindful of it. <laughs> um, I'll but at the same time, I don't... And you can't what? I don't know. I was gonna say, but I was like, about the same time, you know, I, I mean, if I'm going to say I got vaccinated and all this stuff, also, this, this is one of those times where I want to have to, I want to attempt to feel confident in it. So it's like, hey, I did it, which means, and the purpose of it was so I should be able to do a thing like this. Fingers crossed that that is fine. So we'll see how it goes. That's how I feel too. Like, just 
I, I, I'm still worried about everything else around it, <laughs> but I want to feel, I want to feel confident in myself, but it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard to, because maybe for so long, not feeling that confident. Um, that I can totally understand. Yeah. Um, like you, you've been, you've been out of that, that realm of yeah action for so long that to be like, all right, just get on a plane again. It's like, what? Yeah, right, right, right. Um, I'm not used to that. And then you start doing that thing where you pull your collar and, then, yeah, exactly. and then the next thing you know, you're home and you're like, nothing. Not doing it. Not doing it. Um, I'll have to be doing it. I'll be doing it. Maybe maybe even August, but I'm not really sure. Um, other top of the show, gaming related stuff. Um, we finished Call of the Sea, which was the... Oh. Did the, you hear it? Did the, you answer? We, it? we answered the call and um, we turned into a weird fish person, which made Christy and I both very nauseous in the underwater sequences of this video game. <laughs> Wait, that was actually a story beat you become a fish person? Yeah. yeah like, not a mermaid, a fish person. I mean, you can't really tell if you're a mermaid because you can't see behind yourself because it's a first person game, which I oh, think. Oh, they it, never saw the character. Yeah, mode. which is which is fine, but I don't think it needed to be a first person game. But it did make it feel a lot like Mist. The puzzles were fun. It was just as hard as the puzzles got, which wasn't super hard. I wish there were more of them. Like I wish there were a lot more of them. Uh, so we finished that, and then um, Christy started Horizon Zero Dawn, and so we've been playing that uh, for a few days. And, um, and that's a big shocker because the whole get dizzy thing, I feel like that would be very prevalent in that game because there's a lot of scaling and yeah. climbing and spinning cameras. Well, it's it's um it's I think maybe we got we we've started to acclimate to it based on the last game, and so this one's over the shoulder. There's a lot less like camera flying around, um and uh, and so we're getting into it. So Christie's on the controls the whole time right now. And um, it's just a lot of we have it on like we have it on easy mode just because I don't want to deal with I don't want to deal with any kind of um, like like having to deal with stamina like running and, and jumping and climbing on Wait, things. Wait, does easy remove the stamina? I, I can only imagine because the fighting is still difficult. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right, now you see, now you got me wondering what easy does. Like I assume the easy was like experience the story, go punch a dinosaur and knock it out. That's all you got to do. <laughs> no, no, no. There's still things coming at you, pretty hardcore. Um, but maybe that's maybe it's just like less damage or something. But uh, but it's still pretty tough. So we're having fun with that. And um, I haven't gotten back to Persona in a while, but it's on it's on the it's on the ready on the ready. That's my that's my I'm summer my summer goal for now, which is the, which is the theme of today's show. My summer goal is to finish Persona Five. It's gonna happen. You want to talk about a? Uh, we'll hear how that goes at the end of the such to such yeah. time. There's your follow up. Did you finish Persona Five? No, but September, however, Labor Day, Labor Day. Labor That's day. your challenge to Pernell. yourself into the Lab- world. You'll be Labor done. Labor day. It's going to be done. You'll be done Persona 5 by Labor Day. Yeah, and I'll have done it better than you. Okay, now, well, I just, you just lost that already. Exactly. So that's okay, I, would have, I would have surpassed Purnell's knowledge. I would have gotten so good at the game. That that's I, impossible. That I am Mr. Persona. They call me Mr. That's Persona. That's the day. <laughs> And and if you had if you had the desire to actually do it, I'm sure you could. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, you wouldn't. That wouldn't happen. And I understand. And, and there's, there's no shame. It is like because for you to do that, you'd have to ask to get all the grinding and crap. And no, I yeah, it's, hard it's, move it's not going to happen. Master weaknesses and stuff. I, I'm so actually no. bowing to the master because I get to these bosses and I get to like the just like some of the harder enemies in these stages. I can't do anything against these guys because I'm not following any of the rules. Uh, so how do you Max get past any of that? Brute force. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm going to hit them until they die, <laughs> or I run. Uh, but no, anyway. Oh, it, for our listeners, if you have not played Horizon Zero Dawn, it's beautiful and it is a lot of fun. It's very open world. Um, if you and it's cheap and it's cheap, actually, it was cheap like free, which is why I'm playing it now on PS4. I don't know if it's still free right now, but it was free when I got it. Um, if you played Breath of the Wild, it plays a lot like that. It's a lot of just you can just make your own story it's a lot of fun um okay so this week's episode is similar to last week's but it's more personal so that is right yeah. it is the summer games challenge what the heck are we going to play <laughs> or try to play over the next few months keyword is try because well, life hits comes at you hard and fast well what i did and I, I picked one game for the for, for the next few months <laughs> So what I did was I picked like a like kind of a nostalgia fest, a history of my summer games. 
Wait a minute, but summer hasn't happened yet. So you're you're basically already accepting that past I'll be lucky. Summer. You'll be lucky to play through play no, one game. No, no, like oh, you're, like are, you doing summer, the, are you doing the past summer thing? Like when I was like 16 what, uh, like what or, some of the patrons did. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I did. That's what I did. I did a few of those, and then yeah. So but okay. I, I had a feeling yeah. what will come out from it. It's, it's kind of a one of those. It's one of those. So Rob topics. is the Rob is the gamer of summer's past, and I am the gamer of summer's present. Yes. And we have yet to find a gamer of summer's future, but I'm sure they're out there somewhere, <laughs> and they'll have some picks. Well, I'm sure it's just um, another. I don't know. Where are they? Where, where are they? Where are they? Never going to stop making Zelda. It's going to be Zelda. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I don't, it's almost like the sky's the limit. You, as long as it's a certain company or certain companies, all uh, their games are on the table. Skies of Arcadia. Um, but if you're nope. Capcom and it's not a Resident Evil, not so much. <laughs> so sad. Um, anyway, I, I just said the word Zelda, but like my first track I'm going to pick today is from Z- The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Game Boy. And this is oh. Koholint Co- Island, composed by Katsumi Totaka and Minako Hamano. And um, this is really the only like Zelda Mono. game I put a lot of hours into, so um, this means a lot to me. So here we go, Koholin Island from Link's Awakening. We're getting started on early on the summer of 16 bit. <laughs> on the summer. Hey, well, no, no, not so much 16, but this is totally 8 bit. It is 8 bit. Yeah, it's totally 8 bit. So you're listening to Koholin Island from The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Sega. For the Sega. <laughs> for the Sega Game oh, Boy. Oh, God. Sega Game Boy. I look forward <laughs> to playing that. The Nintendo Game Boy. <laughs> composed by Katsumi Tosaka and Manako Hamano. Um, yeah, this is one. I. I this is one of those games that has only a few, only a few tracks that are, are a little bit longer. Um, everything else is kind of short, little shorty tracks. Um, but they're just they're so memorable. Like this one in Tal Tal Heights, even the intro. Oh yeah. Oh, there's just Tal Tal. To this day, gets like tons of remixes, or at least yeah. a fair number of them for a Game Boy game. Yeah, I, I actually would have picked that if I haven't played it previously on the show. But Tal Tal Heights is my favorite, one of my favorite Game Boy game, my Game Boy. Uh, uh, songs and like uh, overall it's just oh yeah it takes the theme of the Zelda game and just amplifies it it makes it really adventurous because when you get to that point in the game you're, you're a little bit more than halfway through and you're like really exploring at that point I think you get the hook shot after that and it's like it's awesome it's super cool um, so yeah the, the, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was like my first like real Zelda game I never played the, the NES one I played the, the the second second Zelda game, but it didn't really feel like Zelda. And then um, I never had a Super Nintendo, so I never really got to play Link to the Past. Is that what that was? That was Link to the Past, right? Link to the Past was Super Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. So, but 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 this one was very similar to that, and um, I loved it. I I picked this game because we would go on trips to upstate New York for camping okay. every, almost every year. Um, and uh, it was long drives in the car with the family, crammed in the back seat of a station wagon, and I would play this game <laughs> with your Nyko Bendy Light. Yeah, and I would just this is what I looked forward to. Like, I was like, oh, it's going to be so many hours in the car, and I just I wanted to. I, my goal was like to finish like the the trade, the trading, or the fetch quest, like the little side quests within <laughs> Link's Awakening. The whole oh yeah, they, what the Yoshi doll? Yeah, for yeah. the for the bat. Red or whatever. I don't yeah, know what you, you gotta do. find they like a lot of weird you gotta find this thing. Things. You got a letter to trade to somebody, and they got like a can of dog food to trade to the alligator. And uh, but yeah, but they remade this right for the Switch. Uh, no, Game Boy Color. Yeah, you're right. I take that back. They did it for the Game Boy Color first, right? And then they remade it for the 
r way later, of course, for yeah. the Switch, and they gave it kind of more of a cartoony, like like a no, you want to call it a cartoon? More like, think of like a diorama. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it looks very much like a like a very well like an artistic diorama in motion. Yeah, I want to say really I saw some cool. screenshots and I was like, it looks really really cute, and I hope it plays the same way because like this game is just I feel like it's just it's not really. Long. It's not really big. It's just like a perfect little like this is a fun Zelda game. This is a fun adventure game with little secrets to find and fun dungeons yeah. to get into. Um, it really just and I've actually played. Yeah, I got into it. No, 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 and for good reason. I mean, I, and the length of it is perfect in the sense that you end up. I mean, I've played through it multiple times, which even back then is a was a feat for me, but. Like the first time I played through it, I did everything but the secret sea um, seashell. Secret seashells by the seashore. Yeah, yeah. There, three There's times fast. The, the hidden um, seashells around the around the island. Yeah, oh, because so I didn't many. realize the, there's a ton of them. And then the other the thing that was terrible about it was that they designed it in a way where you had to go back to the seashell house every like five or ten of them in order to get a new seashell that it rewarded you for getting a set of five or ten. So if you didn't go back at that interval, say you needed 10 and you came back with 11, it would go over the marker where you'd get the reward for the seashell and you wouldn't get it, which means you were officially locked out of the final reward, which was like the beam sword. It was really annoying, but when I realized that later, I came back and played through the game again to get the cool sword, and I was happy about it, so that was good. But one thing I also found interesting, too, like it made me, you mentioned a Game Boy game and summer travel was pretty cool because... I was having a conversation with someone just earlier today. Um, we had early in this in this area a couple days ago, or maybe it was even yesterday. I don't remember. We had a really, really bad traffic situation. Like people were like, it was gridlock for hours all yeah. around oh, because was, of like a toxic, a... like a toxic chemical spill. Yeah, really bad. And I, um, I write about that, and then I saw your post, and I was like, oh, you got caught in that thing. <laughs> oh, oh, I was so in it. And it didn't irk me too much, so much as, aside from the idea, of course, like, I was hoping my boss wouldn't get on my case about it, but if they didn't, I didn't care. As long as, I'm, as, long as they don't, like, dock my pay, I, I can deal with it, right? But then a co-worker was like, I'd be so annoyed if I wasn't working from home that day. This is awful. And I was like, can you imagine what it was, do you remember what it was like before Game Boys and cell phones with, like, internet access? Getting stuck in traffic and the only thing you had access to was, like, whatever garbage was playing on the radio at the uh. time and gasp your family uh, is like what do you do but like now it's like you're stuck in traffic like hey i'll just check facebook or i'll read kotaku or i'll read the new times or you know my local news like there's as long as your phone has juice in it if you're in gridlock no no it's new you're covered you Pernal, got stuff to do it's new billboard day you get new billboards <laughs> yeah the problem is you'll see that one billboard and only that billboard for like an hour. So <laughs> this week, you need, give you need her something that moves. English muffins. <laughs> you got you, it. You got it, Mr. Billboard. Uh, the billboard knows. All right. So Pernell, what's your first? So you're, you're playing games that you're going to play this summer. Yeah, I am the ghost of summer's present. Well, actually, summer's future, actually, right? Because. No, this is summer's present. We are in... This is summer... Well, I guess technically summer hasn't started yet. Well, if you, have a, a calendar if, you have, perspective. if you haven't played it yet, then it's definitely a future. No, no, I'm playing all these games. It's just I got to get through them <laughs> as my summer games because I started them all and mm. I've been playing them all. Uh, I got to finish them all. Sounds like work. Um, <laughs> no, but they're all... I mean, I mean, like, work is... I don't even know what work is anymore. I'm just doing, but... With me, uh, I just bounce around with games so sounds much, like doing. and I get <laughs> well. That, well, yes, that's a yes. That's what it is. <laughs> Stop. I'm so confused. I am. I've been. I've started all these games in some capacity, but I want to finish them in a sense that I always intended to. It's just I got sidetracked. But this is my hope that I will focus on them and knock them out, kind of like the February thing, but with more games. Over a lengthier period of time. That's all. So, um, so I'm going to start this off with a recent new release. New as in, I think it came out last week. Ooh. But it's a it's a doozy of a goodie. Um, this game is called Astalon Tears of the Earth. And the track is for the Gorgon Tomb area of the game. And it's composed by Matt Cap. <laughs>
welcome back. You're listening to the Gorgon Tomb theme from the game Astalon Tears of the Earth, composed by Matt Cap, and it's on a bunch of consoles that are recent and modern. I, I, well, Xbox and Steam, and I'm sure PlayStation has it, and I know Switch does too. So it's on all those guys. Um, it is a gem. I love it very much. I've played the living snot out of it. I just need to conclude it because it's going to get done. I'm going to finish it. Review games. I still have to review, of course, but I'm kicking a bunch down as I need to because I want to play through this. This, this is this has probably like, one of my th- has a very old school um, vibe, but very similar to to me. It seems very similar to La Mulana, and where it's like screen screen to screen. It's not scrolling really. Kind of, but uh, I think the most accurate comparison to this game would be Legacy of the Wizard, which was yes. an old Falcom game that yeah. they had on like PCs, and then eventually the NES had it. Um, it's funny, because if you go to a review site, or lately any review site, Pernell Rant Session, uh, they will call it a Metroidvania game, and the, the amount of misuse people were having for that term is borderline and Salting at this point, like I, I don't even understand what people think Metroidvania is anymore. But this is not it. This isn't even close to a Metroidvania game. This is a Metroid esque game at best in that sense. It's an adventure platformer. Uh, but I mean, like anybody who's listening, if you want to write, you know, write in or text or whatever, like, what do you think of Metroidvania? Represent. I love to hear because I just want to know what people have had to. To perceive it as in this day and age, where they distilled since it was a term that. that was coined in '97, it was coined in ni- no '96 actually. It was coined. I'll double check. Whatever year Castlevania came out, I want to say it came out the end of '96, but that's when it was coined. And um, as a result, I feel like a lot of time has passed. A lot of game releases have come out and shifted things around, but that term and people don't know anymore but i'm curious about what other people oh think man this game's think. harder it's like dark souls hard <laughs> it's the dark souls of metroidvanias but uh but no but, yeah, but, but this, this game like, itself this looks like a pernell game to me it's side scrolly it's retro it looks hard it's a it's a game where you are a group of heroes who are going into a tower to defeat the people that live within people being gorgons they're not actual people surprise um they're demons and you're defeating them because you believe they are the cause of a poisonous miasma that has poisoned your village and you it's basically like a large interlocking environment so a giant tower with different sections within the tower and you're traversing it uh the hook or the two hooks of the game mind you are that you are three different characters and you switch between them at bonfires though eventually you get an item unless you just switch from between them at will um and they all have different unique world traversal abilities um, and the, the other hook is that once you die, it's actually a narrative based reason for it, but you go to like this afterlife place and there's like a guy, a demon lord or whatever that's talking to one of the characters who resurrects everybody. And you can also spend like soul energy that you find throughout the game to buy upgrades for your characters when you're resurrected. So you die to shop. That's what he says. You die to shop. Die um, to. And then you come back. Die for commerce. I, that's a that's good. Right. I, I like that because Amazon it, loves it. Well, it feels like a roguelike. Well, like, not so much because a roguelike would imply that you die and you lose a bunch of stuff. In this game, the only roguey, like like typically any like it's very I can't think of too many times where a roguelike will kill you. Like usually when they let you carry over like a bonus, like say like now going forward you'll have like I don't know. Like you'll gain like twice the you know orb energy when you kill. Okay, okay, okay. Class, That's almost like classic rogue, right? Yeah, you die, it's over, game over, start over again. But like rogue likes how we're doing it modern wise is is you're you're accruing stuff or maybe money. You die, then you spend it so that your next run you've got a little bit of a leg up, and you're constantly dying and getting better, dying and then getting better, the dying and then getting better. So okay, that I get on that from that perspective, I get. But I feel like whenever I think about roguelikes, even the like element, I feel like there has to be some element of like heft challenge so that the buying of stuff doesn't really tip the scale, so to speak. It's just more like it makes it easier, but it ain't tipping no scales. In this game, those death rewards are that is like your literal shopping. Like 
that is how you grow, aside from finding like items like mm. a la, like, you know, on a pedestal like ice beams and Metroid or something. Yeah. Like that is your growth, is dying and shopping to get your health up yeah. or your attack strength up that and all like you know, is, you know leveling up works. Yeah. You die and shop for level stuff. That's a great metaphor, honestly. I'm thinking about it now, like maybe that's why I like roguelikes, but this in particular where like the I the, the, the factor of failing or the factor of losing is all designed to get better. You know, so mm -hmm. you're encouraged to try and fail trial and error in order to progress. And I feel like that's Yes. And I feel like that and being able to do that is a skill that people don't respect enough of. People I concur. People have huge respect for like these these like musical and gaming and sports like savants who can just do anything in one shot, right? Make it look super easy. But like everyone else, like like the mad respect goes to the people grinding on these things. And these games reward grinding. You know? Like mm -hmm. if you like it, you're gonna get better at it, but you're not gonna get better at it right away. I concur. And I think it's like when you say grinding, like no for not distant to you, this is just anyone listening, like don't confuse that for like the typical grind of like I'm gonna play Final Fantasy Four, but I'm gonna like level up to like seventy before no, 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 no. town of mist. You're not game. We're grinding, talking like, like literal skill grinding. Yeah, playing, playing, you know, you know, physical skills as opposed to um, g gaining points on a screen. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why I play fighting games and, and rhythm games. That, that's the skills that I'm grind. Those are the skills that I'm grinding on. Um, you know, it's, it's very rewarding when you see. I, like, oh my god, I beat that song. Mm -hmm. I've never done that, and it always irks me when someone's like, "You're like, hey, do you want to try this game?" And they look at go, "No, that's too hard for me." I'm like, it was hard for everybody until they played it. <laughs> You're not supposed to just get up and be good. Otherwise, who the heck would want to play? Yeah, it? there's like three people in the world who just pick it up and get better at it. But because that's where everyone's watching on Twitch or whatever, then like, oh, yeah, of course, people could speed run the hell out of this thing. No, not anyone could speed run the hell out of a Mega Man game. Everyone else is just going to enjoy it and get better exactly. at it slowly. Like, me, mm -hmm. I suck at those games. Um, all right, so my next game... Should is, be Mega Man. <laughs> no, it's all about, it is all about learning, but learning in a different way. Um, this, which is, I think you're going to be a little surprised about, okay? Um, this is Doom for the PC. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. I said, wait, depends. I'm think I'm used to Doom being in schools, not homes. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I a, little, a little bit I'm of both. A little surprised. Definitely at home. All right, so this is Doom for the PC. We're listening to the ad lib version composed by Bobby Prince. We're listening to Kitchen Ace and Taking Names. You're listening to uh, Doom for the PC from the AdLib sound card. This is Bobby Prince, and the track is Kitchen Ace and Taking Names. And for the record, for those who didn't pick up on it, that's not quite the title, but Rob's doing the thing because, you know, we got kids listening. I, that's how it was titled, um, but I haven't... I don't, there's so many soundtracks to Doom, it's hard to know what's what. To be honest, and I, that's fine. Someone who's more versed in Doom, they, they can tell me. But I, I kind of, 
Yeah, you think maybe about that is a real title for Ogden. Maybe it was a tongue in cheek title. Yeah, it could be. Um, all right, so Doom, right? So I played Wolfenstein a whole bunch in school. You know, on uh, okay. like PCs and stuff, like in shop class and in study halls and things like that. And um, so my friend Henry, growing up, he grew up on a, a farm nearby, and um, I used to hang out there and we used to play in the orchard. And um, his uncle had a bulletin board system, a BBS system. <laughs> which, I remember those. Yeah, which was amazing to me. It was like, so we would go up into. He lived up in the attic of this old this old house, and we would go up into the house. And it was just full of like computers and old stuff. And he was he collected like uh, Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy books from the seventies. And he ran the bulletin board system called the PC Pub in Wilmington back in like the nineties. And he was like, "Hey, Rob, I just downloaded this game. You and Henry, you got to play this thing. If you liked Wolfenstein, this is gonna blow your mind." And I saw this thing, and I couldn't believe like how it looked on the screen it, to me at the time of course it looked like it's ultra realistic you know <laughs> but uh like the idea of like a wolfenstein game that was like really dark and futuristic and like extra violent it was really exciting to me so that's what i did um all that summer was was get into doom but then i think it was the following summer or the summer after that um i got a, a cd of like do you remember like you would see in um like software, like, like not not like Walden Software or before it was EB, they used to sell books that was like Hack Doom or Make Your Own Doom, and it was like all about like making your own levels and stuff. I honestly don't remember it, but that's only because I didn't get into computers until fairly late compared to other people. Like I used to play at friends' houses exclusively. Uh, um. But anyway, so I got like one. crap. I would go there with this. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Anyway, I, I got a book for Christmas that was like how to hack Doom, and it was um essentially it was a it was a a CD and a whole guide on how to pick it apart the oh. game and modify the game to make your own like enemies so this, and stages and stuff. So the CD have like come um, like software for the purpose like actual like customization the Doom map customization software on it. Yeah, essentially that's what it was. So I, I could go in and like create my own sprites and create my own sound effects, but like I wasn't about to do all the extra animation. I wanted to create levels and stuff. So I got really, really, really into understanding how the game engine worked and how like to pick apart all the files and then how to create stages and create lighting effects and create all this stuff that wasn't in the original game into my own little levels and play around in them. And so I feel like Doom like kind of got my interest into programming and sparked more interest into game development. So like that's why I spent a whole so summer would, doing it. So, yeah. so you would technically say you'd, partly, you'd pretty much attribute your current interest in this whole thing to Doom. Partly, yeah. That and like QBasic programs from back in the day and, and seeing like a... Uh, the older brother of a friend of mine create like weird like 3D objects and engines and th things like that within QBasic and being like oh I can do all sorts of math and things and these things but this was like I can actually lay out levels and lay out geometry and lay out where enemies are going to be and that that and, and then see and then piece it together and then see it in real time it was it was a lot of fun um, but then again it wasn't exactly real time back then it was <laughs> it was like it took forever to like decompile the whole game, create your stage, and then recompile the whole game, and then play it. It took so long. It took forever. It took forever. It was a project. Oh, it was a project, but it was fun. So, yeah. Like and nowadays, like these types of games don't super interest me. Yeah, we're playing Horizon right now, but I'm not about to go and pick up like a run and gun game because I can't keep up with that stuff. You know. Yeah, it's weird. Like I lately, like I'll do reviews for that kind of stuff. And I always feel like I almost want to start with a caveat that says, look, I'm not sure if it's because I'm an old, old man or it's my TV or the console I'm using, but I, I have these gripes with this game. Like, I just reviewed a game called, like, Necromunda or something, mm -hmm. and you're technically a gunner. It's it it an FPS game, too. But it got to the point where, like, I was so bad at setting up shots with enemies at a distance that I just melee killed everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I would just rub, stab them, keep moving. <laughs> we're having that issue with Horizon, where like um, Christy gets kind of nervous, like when there's like we're, there's a lot of action at one time. But fortunately, in this game, like you can actually like sneak around and like hunt and and take things out at like a distance. 
So I'm like, we're going to get really good at doing that. <laughs> you know, we're going to okay. get really good at sneaking and not being caught and like, and just, and just taking our time with this type of game. But Doom was different. Doom, 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 there was no aiming. It was just left and right. You know, you just turn left, you turn right, and you just shoot. And um, I'll tell you, though, that, that was fun. That's Doom all, is. That's all you needed. Doom has definitely changed since those days, too. Like, uh, Doom Eternal was the last one that came out. Mm-hmm, right. And I put that on hard mode like a complete idiot. <laughs> and uh, that game was wrecking my day. But that was also why it was good for it was a good that that existed to compare against the game I just reviewed. Because in that one, though I wasn't like a perfect shot, when I was in a panic and I was running and dodging and gunning, oh, man, I was dropping those sniper shots, pat, 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 all over the place. And it was like, hmm. So man still got it. But at the same time, of course, the view the view can get a little bouncy because I guess it's the way they render games now. It's a little weirder on the eyes. It screws with you. But um for the most part I still got it. But it's not as easy as it used to be, that's for darn sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's exposure. Listeners are like, man, these guys are old. What's going <laughs> on with the pixels? I think I just appreciate more in, in video games. Yeah, I've played enough. You know, I I, I like I like the first-person shooters. I, I I get why people enjoy them, you know, and I get the the skill involved in playing them, but I just can't do it. I played a uh, um, what was that? What's that? Apex Legends was the last one I played on the PS4, and I had fun, but like I wasn't gonna go back and play it and like try to get good at. It. I'm glad it was free to play because this is not the thing I'm gonna get into, you know. Um, so, uh, so Pernell, we're on to your second track, right? Yes, sir. Um. The summer of the the ghost of summer present continues on with his rampage in the form <laughs> of a game that I've mentioned on the show before, but I'm de- determined to actually see more of it than prior times because I really like it, but AP really screws with me. Analysis paralysis for those who aren't to know. Um, and this game is Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusk on the PS4 and the Switch. And the track is titled Wasteland, and it is composed by Tempe Sato, a guy, a dude, that person I like. He's awesome. Welcome back. You're listening to Wasteland, theme from the game Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusk for the PS4 and Nintendo Switch, composed by Tempe Sato. Those who don't know by name would know him as that guy who composed Disgaea tracks. Mm. Um, I adore this tune, which is good because I've been stuck here for a little while. Oh no! It was the it, it took it's the, it's the track it's the stage where I stopped playing the game, but I've recently gone back to. So I was like, no, I gotta press on and see more of this game because the premise is ridiculous, but the story is surprisingly intriguing. I want to know where the hell it's going, uh, and the gameplay is great, um, if not the not strange. 
So the idea behind the game proper, it's a dungeon crawling RPG by Nippon IT Software. And you are not actually a person in this game. You can you are a book, a living book who is owned by a witch named Madame Dronia who is in this weird town which has all kinds of crazy secrets taking place within it. And she's using this book to explore the world beneath a well that exists at the center of the town. So she goes to this book, the well, drops the book inside, and you as the book have to explore the place that exists within this well. And it's a really weird magical world that mm. for all intents and purposes should not exist. And as you explore, the book itself can't do anything. Like, it can't fight or anything like that, though it has some, like, magical abilities. Like, you can smash walls and, like, create exit portals and stuff. As a book. But fighting is done by way of puppets, living puppets so that the confused. witch summons, brings to life, and sends in with the book, and the book can, like, summon the puppets, and then you can have a party of up to, like, 50 different puppets mm. fighting enemies in this thing. So you're a book and they're all controlling puppets. Yes, against monsters and weird stuff in this well. And it is very engaging. Hmm. It's surprisingly enjoyable. Once you get a grasp on what the heck's going on, you're like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. Like, it's a very unique dungeon crawler. And that I can't think of one that's ever done anything like this one, the way this one functions. This uh, song is, is like, very unique, too. It's I really like, I, I love this the sound of it. Like, the, the singing mixed with that violin sound is very cool. And it's funny because like the it plays in a level like which is where I'm stuck at. Um, you're exploring a garden where it's like if it was a normal environment, you'd be shrunken down in this garden because you in this world you pretty much are like sure smaller than the leaves, and you're fighting a bunch of like pixie sprites. You're fighting like a caterpillar train uh, and other just general monsters like angry flowers and weird stuff that's down there. It's and it's fun. Like it's I am enjoying the hunt. It's a good environment and a good game. It's just AP comes in the form of the fact that, like I mentioned before, you can control up to eventually like 50 to 60 puppets. Oh, yeah. And you're slowly building this up. But because you basically get a, get wood to and you can use it to build up it, but then you have to get a soul to inject into the puppet. And then once you've done that, you choose between one of six or more classes because you unlock classes for the puppets. You choose the design of the class. Then you choose like the astrological sign that it falls under, which determines its base stat growth, and then there's like another trait you choose, which determines like the skills it can learn, and then you build it, and then this puppet is locked into the world, and then you have to put it into something called a pact, and the pact determines what its like attack abilities and magic spells will be in different slots in the pack so, determine what extra ability the puppet will so get. There's so much customization that you're just getting stuck on like you don't know what to do next, or you're like Oh no, now I have to do now I have a new puppet. How am I supposed to like are you just like spending way too much time deciding what attributes to add to it or you just don't? You just stick with your base set. More of that, but I'm at the point now where I feel like to not make the puppet would be to be wasting valuable time because mm -hmm. unlike my normal just keep going, puppets are important in this game to the point where like when I finally decide I better get a new puppet, then I got to build that puppet up which is going to waste more time. So I'm better off making the puppets as I get the tools to do so. Oh, that, but then I'm like, yeah. what if I make a bad puppet and I'm misusing it or something? Would you, know? you so appreciate like, the game more than if it gave you less choice? Less yes and no, because if it gives you too less choice, then, yeah. then I'm like, then I'm like, you know, this is kind of annoying, but it's the same reason why I liked Final Fantasy 13. A lot of people didn't like Final Fantasy 13 says, Hey, we're going to make you just run down a bunch of corridors and let the game just kind of tell you where to go instead of exploring and getting lost. Mm -hmm. And the customization options in that game existed, but they were slowly opened up to you and they even kind of neutered them compared to like what 12 did. Mm -hmm. So if you're the type of person who deals with AP, this game kind of says, well, you don't have to worry about it because yeah. everything is just kind of straightforward <laughs> and there's yeah. nothing. You can't screw it up. Yeah, there's something to be said about a good linear storyline or a good linear game in that way I, I, that's why i think I, I love 10 so much you know it's just you're, you're going from start to finish you know you're not going to get lost in between somewhere um until the end when you can just do whatever you want but um, and even with the customization aspect like it's available but it's there in a way where you don't if you don't want to engage it you really don't have to yeah, just don't use friend spheres <laughs> yeah yeah exactly you don't have to do anything crazy with it you can just kind of keep going um it is available to you though but yeah 
I think I'm with you. Um, I would get, I would like the, what you described. I would become so overwhelmed. I would, I would just be like, "What's, what's everyone else doing?" You know, <laughs> I'll just do that. But for the, but for the sake of this summer challenge, I gotta break that mold. Even if it just makes means I'm making a bunch of dead puppets for the sake of like filling slots in my party mm-hmm. and hoping they do something. <laughs> so be it. Got to make it happen. Right. Got to see what happens in the rest of this dungeon. Got to find the. Got to find my my buddy Lamb Fro Fro Fro, whatever the hell his name is. Well, yes, there's a lamb named Fro Fro. A lamb named Fro Fro. Well, my last track um, of this set is something where I did everything in it, which I mean is to say not a lot of customization, but there was for a time a whole lot of customization. I'm talking about Pernell, late '90s, early 2000s, the Sega Dreamcast. Oh, Pokemon, obviously. Dreamcast, yes, like Pokemon. Dreamcast. Yeah, Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> Jet Set Radio, Pernell. Jet Set Pokemon. This game came out, and I played it like nonstop, and then I and I never finished it. And I put it down for a while, and then one summer I said, "I'm gonna finish this game," and I did, and I'm so glad I did because it it was. Your gas made it so hard. I, it was so hard, but I'm just I'm so happy to be like you know what what a what a fun, interesting, unique experience this game was. We're going to listen to one of my favorite songs ever, which I completely forgot about. Not one of the hip-hop songs. This is called Bout the City from Jet Set Radio. This is by oh, the by the reps. Up, up to. Yeah, yeah. This is S. Foreman. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one I was like pronouncing. I love the song. This is uh, S. Foreman and Sheena Foreman, the reps from Jet Set Radio, Bout the City. Yeah. 
<laughs> you just listen to <laughs> you just listened to about this city from Jet Set Radio on the Sega Dreamcast that was performed and composed by the reps S Foreman and Sheena Foreman and um, you didn't get to hear it but I got to hear Pranel sing the whole song front to back <laughs> the whole time baffling like it's weird like that's a prime example of how a track can just get into your head because I've never read the lyrics to the song. You know this, and song. I've never. I, I have listened to it like I will say I listened to it like on a, or headphones before, but like never read the lyrics. But I know the whole song beginning to end. Like really, I feel like if you didn't give me like an actual sound to go off, it might get a little lost. But hearing it, oh yeah, I can get it. Like yeah, boom, right. I can karaoke the heck out of this. Yeah, this song. is this is this is this is Pernell karaoke mode like right right away. <laughs> Oh like, man! I, like, I know this song. I looked over at the camera, and you were like, you were just jamming to this song. You were just into it. It's one of the best songs in that game. It is. Hands down. Everyone, everyone talks about Super Brother. Super Brother is a great song. Um, it definitely, definitely, all the Hideki Nakanuma tracks are fantastic. I love like a, a, a humming to the beat or humming to the rhythm. It's so good. It's so good. But this song. This song is like the summer song. This is a summer jam. Yeah, I feel like this was the. Tr- I remember this track playing on a level where you get chased by dogs. Like the first level, they <laughs> introduce dogs, and you're like running around that weird, like shanty town on the docks. Yeah, that's and a good stage. Yes, it is. Not like, getting oh. chased by the dog. That that's when like the difficulty really ramps up because they are like homing in on you. But um, so I. I did a lot of customization in this game on the Dreamcast because I I took advantage of making my own tags. Um, mm-hmm. I, was that was that the American one or was that only in the that was in both versions, right? No, it wasn't Amer- it was it was in both of them, yeah. Okay. You could upload tags, do like your VMU. I had a um when this game first came out, I did have a rip of it of the Japanese version that I played a whole whole bunch. But I got stuck because there was some kind of weird glitch in one of like the, the under um, uh, poison jam. Yeah, poison jam. It was poison jam. jam. It was the the chase sequence because like, there's some of the basic they did bosses in this game was you were tagging against rival gangs and the way you beat them was you had to spray paint their backs yeah. three times per gang member until you knocked them out but Poison Jam and the Japanese version I'm not sure if it was only ripped versions or if it was across the board oh, that'd be but funny if it was only it was ripped versions only I feel like it was only for like the ripped versions because you know obviously the anti-measures and all that but one of the characters on the team had it what's called a perfect grind which is he never he would grind across everything across the level non-stop he never failed and the only way to catch him was by being just as good as he is yeah. which most people playing that game were not oh no it was <laughs> so, i mean like even like if you were fantastic like, you'd have to be so perfect to catch up to this thing um but so that's where i stopped but i mean anyway it caught my attention i wanted to play it so 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 it, in fact it came out to the states and it got an american release i was just they got with a weird name check grind radio but it's, that's fine it's the same game that's all that mattered to me i think it was, it was, it was trademarked it yeah, was trademarked i think it was yeah, why. something else but um uh, i think this song was still in the game and i played a whole bunch with the customization like making because you can make your own tags and it wasn't just drawing like it had a whole thing where you can like actually type out words and then mess with like 3d of it and then change the how it was all like like you know how like um, like graffiti is like all like wacky and, and stretched out and, and all that and, and twisted, you can do all that stuff within the game. And so I made a whole bunch of custom tags and just made did the whole game with my own stuff. It was the equivalent of like how, if you're anyone's familiar with um, bead sprite construction, how you like how you edit it down to the pixel level. Mm. That's pretty much how this could do with the tag. Like if you wanted to get that intricate, you could pretty much drill down to like the actual pixels and start changing colors and expanding and tweaking them around it was it was fun very elaborate for a game yeah I, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it so i, I spent a like i probably spent as much time with tag with customizing all the tags which is i, I didn't realize this is kind of a theme more because i was customizing doom and here i am customizing jet set radio <laughs> Um, I mean, it worked I out. I mean, if it goes to painting, it just goes to show you, like this. This is the this is the Rob Nichols success story. Like, what created Rob Nichols? I just plain like constructing things in games. I like video games. It's fun. Um, but anyway, this song, this song is great. <laughs> this song is super, super duper summery sounding. Um, and doo wop doo wop. 
Yeah. Don't I, forget that. I don't think I appreciated it as much when it first came out because I, I, mean, I had the soundtrack and I listened to it like on CDs and on tapes in the car. But the, um, but I always enjoyed more of like the electronic songs and the hip hop songs. But now mm-hmm. I think I appreciate like these songs a little bit more. I just, I just love it all. Like, a, lot I was, of, a lot of nostalgia I, attached to it, though. I was addicted to this game, and then they like add Dracula because apparently, you know, the kids loved Rob Zombie back then. So, of course, Dracula fit into a game about Japanese skateboard and skating punks. Yeah. And, uh, counterpoint: They included Jurassic Five, and Jurassic Five is like, I mean, if there's going to be a soul, like, like American, I yeah, if there's going to be like another. Like side to this story, like Jurassic Five fits in that thing, you know. If it wasn't going to be them, it was going to be Tribe Called Quest. If Tribe got in this game, that'd be awesome. Hey, that's funny. I feel like I remember all the tracks in it because they added Dragula, they added Jurassic Five track, and they added Just Got Wicked by Cold, which also didn't fit into the game, no. and yet it somehow did for the new stage they added, specifically because they added an area that was pretty much like a dark New York City, Times Square, but they called it Grind Square. Oh, that was so You were hard. being attacked by, like, a helicopter shooting missiles at you. And missiles. It was like a very dark place. And then the track's called Just Got Wicked. So I was like, you know, now it kind of fits somehow with this stage. That was but, uh, so, so difficult because it was so vertical. But it was so mm-hmm. cool to look at that, like, once you figured it out, like, it was worth doing. It was so neat. This, this game was, yes, was just was. very rewarding. Um, okay, so Pranel, we are on to your last track of the set. All right, so this is another game that came out fairly recently. I think I follow a trend with a lot of my games. Like, I have my own purchased games that end up in a backlog, and there are a number of them that are on my total summer completion list for sure. But a number of my games end up being games that I start out reviewing, and then I end up really liking them beyond the normal, here's a review. This is like, I got to play more of this beyond the review. I love this game. And this is yet another one of those where I love it. And I recommend it to everybody, but definitely to miss up. Um, this game is called Smelter. It exists on Steam and Xbox, and I think PlayStation and Switch have it as well. Um, this track is titled All That Remains, and it's composed by Evader.
Welcome back. You're listening to All That Remains from the game Smelter, composed by Evader. And this track, is a, this is an interesting track for me in that it does a thing that I wager some people don't like, but for someone like me, it makes the track instantly addictive. And also a track that I would listen to for like a good hour and just not and just kind of stick with it without losing track of tongue. Or actually, I would lose track of tongue. That's how I get to an hour. Um, and that it's a track that has one specific like track, it has one specific flow, but then they add to it every couple measures to so it's the same but slightly different. Yeah. And they give it. And in the case of this guy, he gives it just and he gives it enough time to actually simmer. So it seems repetitive because each measure might be like a minute mm-hmm. or 45 seconds. And then they add the next layer to it. It's another minute or 45 seconds. And then it culminates with that end break. And then it kicks back in from the start and does it again. It's very like and I, progressive in that way where it sort of evolves again and again and again and again. And, and it's not, you're right. It does sound repetitive at first, but there's, there's a lot happening. And I can see why it just becomes really enjoyable, especially during a game. Oh, yeah. And this is an intense track, too. Like, I... I played this before I ended up grabbing the OST. Like I played this track, this stage multiple times, like the old days, like before nowadays, you can just go to like sound cam, SoundCloud or Bandcamp or YouTube. Like I got to hear that track again. I love it so much. And someone's already ripped it, and put it up. But in this case, I, there was nowhere to go. So the only way I could hear it was by playing the stage again. And I did over and <laughs> over again. Because I just liked hearing it. Well, tell me the about the gameplay. It's pretty awesome too. Yeah, the gameplay looks cool. But tell me about the story of this thing, because the YouTube video was like, "Wow, what was happening? It was crazy." It's a very odd plot, and I kind of like that someone said this hasn't been done yet. <laughs> so what this is is a uh, so it goes back to like like this. I guess it's like this for those who are in the Bible. I'm not familiar with like the story of Genesis, like the story of Adam and Eve, and you know they're in the Garden of Eden. And they're tricked by a snake into eating a uh, apple, a forbidden apple, and then God kicks them out of the, you know, the Holy Land, and then end up in like you know the horrors of Earth, <laughs> where we where we all dwell. Um, but in the case of this game, the first part happens where they are in the garden, and the apple is consumed, and they are ejected from the Garden of Eden. But instead of just landing on like just a generic whatever Earth would have been at the time, they land in a place called the Rumbly Lands. And Eve is by herself, but she stumbles across a, a sort of being that goes by the name of Smelter, who fuses with her, and then she he becomes like a suit of armor for her. Yeah. And they kind of develop a symbiotic relationship where she moves around, does like a bunch of action-related stuff using his abilities, and he helps. He, she's helping him get his power back as far as like ruling the, the Rumbly Lands in exchange. He's also helping her try to figure out what happened to Adam and hopefully maybe get back to the garden. So the gameplay is divided into two different styles. There is an act razor type type of environment style where you're conquering like a map and you're building facilities that can house units and then sending those units to control like buildings and attacking monsters that are on the field that are populating and destroying defenses and the like. And then once you destroy defenses in specific areas, you unlock action stages, a la Act Razor. Mm-hmm. And then you enter those levels. And then that kind of plays like a weird variant on like Mega Man X, where you get three, di- you unlock three different from forms of armor that you can switch between at will. And each gives you different mobility and attack um, abilities. Oh, so, like cool. for example, one will let you like do melee attacks and like do like a spring loaded jump and, and like reflect attacks. Another one will let you like air whip and let you do, like an air dash. Another one lets you do like full on like air dashes and wall jumping and stuff, and it gets interesting. It's a lot of fun. Like I like it a lot. Um, I can see people. It's a weird style too, in the sense that do the do the combining two different types of gameplay, it runs the risk of alienating players who dislike one instead of the other. Yeah. Over the other, but at the same time, one I'm positive is gunning for some people who like act raisers. Like if you like the act raiser, check this out. Well, and also, also, if you like Mega Man X, then you'll definitely like this too because it's 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 got that going on also, like wall bouncing and dashing and, and really good side scrolling and, and actually the really good two D artwork, like very very good sprite arts. Very much so, very much so. But like I said, like it just it runs that small risk where like someone might be like, I love Mega Man X, and I've actually seen some people make this review where they'll say like, I like Mega Man X, but I just don't want to deal with the map stuff. And other people might say, I love Mega Man X, and I came into this for that, and I ended up enjoying the map stuff, too. Hmm. But 
you know, like, it's like a roll of the dice to say, will you like the entire package? I think it's worth a shot to find out for yourself because I think it's really great. It looks and cool. Um, is this only Steam or Switch? I'm playing it on Steam, but I know it's on the Switch, and I want to say on the other two, Xbox and PS4, but I don't know if it's on those two or not. But I know it's on Steam and the Switch for sure, so... It looks very, very cool. I want to actually, I'm really interested in it now. Um, but we are coming down to the part of the show called the bonus round. Have you heard of this before? You know, I've, I've never heard of this b- 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 bonus round thing, but you know, I should ch- check it out. And people have been asking it's about it. We, we tend to do things at the end of the show and I forget about it. Like immediately forget about it. But people write in and say, you should do it again. I can't remember what it was. So, so, what, so what is this b- 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 bonus round thing? What is it? Well, we got, exactly? some, we got some letters. And um, the first letter is from uh, former President Barack Obama. And he says, the bonus round is my favorite part of their show. They play covers and remixes based on their theme. Um, another former president, uh, George H.W. Bush, says, I love it when Purnell makes up songs about the bonus round. And then, know. Um, yeah, uh, like bonus round it makes me feel real great, yeah, especially right. when I put my tones in my ears and play. I don't I'm tired. Anyway, the <laughs> point is, George Bush, I'll get you. I got you later, buddy. Got you later. <laughs> uh, the bonus round is beloved by our, uh, of our listeners and uh, former presidents. Um, but it is a where we play covers and remixes and arrangements on our theme. We also tend to play more vocal tracks on this part of the show. Even though I was like, I know where Rob's going. Totally played a vocal track. You heard it before. That's this summer. I'm I'm, I'm onto the summers of of summer present, summer of games present. Anyway, <laughs> the game I'm like, playing this summer. The game I told you I'm going to finish this summer is Persona Five, and I'm going to hold you to it. I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, yeah, you should. And I'm playing the uh, the song of where I'm at right now. This is The Whims of Fate, composed by Shoji Maguro, lyrics by Benjamin Franklin, and vocals by Lynn. <laughs>
That was The Whims of Fate from the game Persona 5, composed by Shoji Maguro, lyrics by Benjamin Franklin, and vocals by Lin and Azumi. Oh, man. That's it's like, electric. That's such a good song, isn't it? It's just, it's just it's better than it needs to be. Like every song, every dungeon in this game, for now, I get so upset that there is battle music. I get more and more annoyed at the battle music because all I want to hear is the stage music because it gets, it gets <laughs> better every time. And it's amazing to me that this is the only dungeon in the game that has vocalized a vocalized dungeon track to it or mm-hmm. dungeon theme. And you would think that spending like an hour or two in a dungeon with a vocalized track would ultimately make you sick of the track by the time it's done. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. This is this is a gym. This is the best. This is a gym of a tune. It's the best. It's so good. It fits the stage. It fits the theme of what's happening. And it's also f- so funky. It's so funky. <laughs> oh, yeah. You go to that, that menu with the hand smash, and you're like, whoa, yeah, perfect. This it's, is so fitting. Oh, it's everything fits in this. In this and I also, I also chuckle in the sense that, like, the lyrics, they're in English. Mm-hmm. She's reading words. Good luck understanding some of them, but you also kind of don't care. You just kind of insert sounds like, mm, ass, so we're sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think the 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 lyrics were written like a lot of the of the songs. The lyrics were written by an English speaker, um, but then sung by, you know, where English is a second language. So, um, but I don't know. But the, the I, they sound fantastic. They sound so good. Oh, I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Like, but her, then like, like she, like she is the voice. Lyrics. She is the voice of Persona Five. Oh yeah, because she's. I think she's the vocalist for all the tracks. Yeah, definitely. Because um, she, she does cause she does the uh, the battle music too, but. Um, all I want to hear is this song now. That's all I want. I t- I'm sure it gets better, but like this is all I want to hear. So um, yeah, that's my bonus round. So Pranel, what are you what are you bringing to the to the bonus round table? Well, this actually is a late addition to my list because I kind of got challenged by Dumb Daryl to go back to this game and finally finish it. Mm-hmm. And I'm honestly really close. The fact that I'm not done is kind of a shocker. I'm t- I just got to go to y'all uh, to. Well, it's a spoiler, but also certain people would get up. Whatever, it's a game. Um, I could go to like Yahweh's universe. That's the last place I need to go in this game, and then I will be done, 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 done. <laughs> but it's a lengthy dungeon filled with like traditional Shin Megami Tensei stuff, like warp tiles and dark spaces. It's going to be a bear. So, but what the heck is Pernell talking about? Yeah, what are you well, he's talking about Shin Megami Tensei Four Apocalypse. Um, and this track that I am playing for the bonus round is the cover of the Tokyo map theme. And it is done by someone that goes by the name of Momega. Momega, Momega, Momega.
Welcome back. You're listening to a Tokyo cover theme from the game Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. Also using the original Shin Megami Tensei 4 as well. Composed or covered by Momega. And I felt that he did an exemplary job covering this already fantastic track. I could not say no to this. Like, this is... Oh, this is good. I kind of went in half expecting like just a straight, not straight, but like a, like a really like heavy metal cover of it, you know, like really hard rocking. But this was something else. Like it had a lot of emotion. I almost like if he did a hard rock metal cover of it, it'd be losing some of the soul of the, tra- the original track. Like yeah. this is not, uh, I mean, like he added some heaviness to it, but it's, a, it's tastefully done. Like, yeah, it's got it's, some darkness, kind of sadness to it. But I feel like Megaten kind of has that, vibe all around it oh yeah like yeah. this is not this is not your granddad's tokyo this is a pretty messed up style version of tokyo so i think this is very fitting and that sadness tone that you heard like it's but it's so good like it makes exploring very nice um it's one of those map themes you never really get tired of like it yeah. sticks with you that's really good. I mean, how how close to the original like like melody is is this? Is it is it kind of? Oh, it carries on? it. Like yeah. like you can like the beginning is all improvised by him, I believe. Like I I don't recognize any of that from the main game, so I'm pretty sure he improvised all of that. But once he gets into it, is is very true to the original. Oh, but then he adds many layers on top of it. I really I really enjoyed that like a whole lot. <laughs> That's like this is one of my favorite bonus round songs in a while. So for more information on the bonus round, go to rhythmandpixels.com where you can get uh, information on the artists and you can get their band camps and sound clouds and everywhere where you can go download the music, buy the music and support these artists. All right, thanks for joining us on episode 28-4 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is our our summer games, the games of summer from years past and the games of this current summer that we're going to do. Gosh darn it, we're going to do it. And chances are, I feel like at the end of the summer, we may as well just pencil it in now. Like the, the, the episode will be like the status check or like the conclusion. And obviously, I'll probably pick tracks from different games that were also on my list. But nonetheless, yeah... It'll be interesting to see how this goes because I did end up like seeing a list of the stuff I picked for last summer this year in like the Facebook memories, and I was like, oh, based on this list, these are the ones I actually completed. Interesting. I, so, how, are you concerned that you're not going to get that far into into the ones that you've kind of that you're kind of? Oh, the, oh that's almost that's almost a given. Like it's just life. It's, life comes at you hard and fast. But the idea is that you want to give yourself something to focus on, like zero in on. And you'd be surprised how much you can knock out when you actually are focused on a specific area of games instead of like hitting your entire shelf, which is what I usually do. Yeah, it's both yeah. physical and digital shelves. Yeah, yeah, not doing one at a time, trying them all and getting really stressed out. <laughs> mm hmm. In this happen. case, it's like, okay, I was able to narrow it down from hundreds to like 10. <laughs> much easier for me to deal with. Oh, man. Well, I for me, I've got one. So, um, and then whatever happens after that is gravy. So. This is bonus. That's, That's your bonus. Bonus, bonus, right? bonus it up, yeah. But the, oh, you technically already did one that call the sea counts. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess so. But you, you beat <laughs> it in June. But it took it just took a couple days. But like, I'm not. I don't play games every day, so. Um, I mean, I, I guess I do, but I don't play new game. I play like dance, dance in between everything else. <laughs> so it's a lot of step. It's a lot of step. I got to step to it. Um, Anyway, if you enjoyed the show, if you like what you're hearing and you want to get in contact with us, if you want to say hi, or if you have a track suggestion or a topic suggestion, we would love to hear it. Please send us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. And um, if you want to learn more about our show and if you want to get a track listing from all of the episodes and links to just everything else that we're doing, you can go to our website. Rhythmandpixels.com. And uh, check us out on all of the social media places, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's just Rhythm and Pixels. It's just all one word. And uh, you can check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. We have a, a 24-7 radio station playing 8-bit and 16-bit classics. 
And if you want to support the show, you can go to rhythmandpixels.com slash merch. We have some cool t-shirts with like video game uh, uh, sound teams, uh, shirts with uh, video game music kind of memes and jokes and, and podcast jokes on there too. So you can check that out there. You can also go to patreon.com slash rhythmandpixels. And as a member there, you get access to a, a monthly live stream of the show, weekly prequel episodes of just me and Purnell chatting, catching up on stuff, and uh, just like bonus content. It's all around, it's just good stuff, man. Just, just, just we're just, we're just trying to do our best out here. So, um, in this wild and crazy world, in this this wild wild world we live in, and um, yeah, so check that out. And we also like to thank all of our members at the highest levels. At the end of every show, I'd like to thank Frankly Zappa, Mike Myers, Vashon 8060, That Nick Walker, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, Matt's Holmquist, Michael Jennings, Davey Cakes, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Sonic. Oh, they're on a, like a monthly like hiatus thing. I guess they they they, they take their summer off. I mean, that's what happened. They take the summer. They take the, they're taking off. Oh, I summer. see. That's right. You know, oh, XVGM Radio. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. What yeah they, they actually take breaks. I don't know. I don't know how that how they do that. Um, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard, Dave Taylor, Ryan Hart, Zelkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Lauten, Sleepy S'more, uh, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Sendstrom, Bobby Arson from 1UP Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos, Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, uh, aka Mebri64, um, a Demo Scene C64 Maniac. Um, and Brian Pitt on the floor yeah on the floor um, but yeah Michael Bridgewater may be making uh, an appearance soon on the show again if they can uh, work out we the, got the topic we got the topic we got a just topic just gotta do time now yeah we just gotta figure out uh, time zones <laughs> and figure all that out that's always a little bit of a difficulty um, when someone's in the UK and we're in the States but it's worth it for him it's worth it, it's I, worth it. yeah I, 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 I really really enjoy uh, Michael's company and his voice he has a great radio voice i think that's super important oh mercy yes i tell you I, I people think i'm being weird or jokey but i am not when i say that as that it's like that i want to have a glass of tea with this guy voice. Like, <laughs> would you like a glass of tea like yes i would yeah, it's, sir. it's, it's, it's not just friendly it's very measured it's very calming um one of the best voices in the podcast business Michael Bridgewater. 100%. Yeah, love him. All right. Uh, so um, now we're going to kick off the summer of 16-bit. Pranel, are you prepared? Are you prepared for this? I am. We, we just got to come up with some genres, but I think it'll be an easy thing, more or less. We can just like, we'll, we'll come up with them easy enough. But the challenge for I think this will be more challenging for me than for you. Like, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, me, I'm like, I love it. This is, this is the stuff I like to go out and listen to and find and and, and just enjoy. And you're you're like, well, I mean, I don't know. It's a an actual retro it's game, like, not retro style. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Retro style does count. What? Like, if no, a game no, Astalon, no 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 no! That totally counts. If it's technically that style of sound to I'm the letter, we're talking about it's this not now. a cover. Well, then we can't call it the summer of 16-bit if it's coming out like on a 64-bit processor. But not necessarily. That's like saying, like for example, like you look the Astalon, right? That looks and plays like an 8-bit game. Like, uh, I'm looks not, like I wasn't seeing too game. much being done there Maybe. that was like, well, for the record, I will likely do what I can to stay <laughs> out of even needing that stuff. But yeah, I can, yeah, well, I'm actually curious if anybody listens to this and they're like, well, technically, Pernell's not too All far. Right, you know what, though? Let's do but, it. Let's do it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it retro. We'll keep it retro. But I'll, I'll tell you, I'm counting. I'm counting those channels. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like every time you're like, this was released on the Xbox One. Like, well, Pernell, you screwed like, the pooch. And man, that's a it. retro system, if ever I heard one. That's Fotro. Fotro. That is Fotro. That is Future Row. All right. Um, <laughs> we keep coming up with new words here. Uh, but yeah, so I'm the looking for... The cromulent words. I'll tell you what, though. I'm not going to do that. Prob- probably. Probably. But my bonus round might be remixes in retro style. How about that? Uh, I can dig yeah. that. Um, They're out there, too. Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. There's lots of people who love that sound. I love that sound. Um, so thanks to everyone for listening to the show. We have a bleepy bloopy summer <laughs> just for you. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Purnell. That's Purnell. I'm Rob Nichols. 
That is true. That is true. <laughs> We've determined this evaluated through a series of rigorous tests and exams. At the end of I every show, fact, Pernell, I am sleepy as heck. <laughs> Super honestly, sleepy. I'm, you're not too. You're not alone on that one. Oh. But but if you're listening to the show you and you're at the end of the show and you're driving, don't get sleepy. Stay awake. <laughs> there you go. There's, there's Rob's doing the end. Remember, don't drive while you're exhausted. And if you do find yourself driving yeah. while exhausted, pull over, get a caffeine hit, roll your windows down, blast some music. But at the end of the day, if you feel as though you're not measuring up and that it's not working, pull your butt over. I don't want to hear any be no obituary with your name in it. Yeah. I'd rather see you get home late yeah. than not at all. Preach it. That's a rhythm and pixels. Driver safety. <laughs> and if you're not a driver, watch out for your driving, the person that's driving you around. Yeah, Don't let if you're not driving, if- just assume everyone else is listening to our show and falling asleep. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs>